Hey all you sketchy people, welcome back to my channel. Here is a look at my sketchbook. This sketchbook in particular is the one that goes with me everywhere I go. It's my stream of conscious sketchbook and I do not leave home without it. And for all you artists out there, I highly suggest always having a sketchbook on you because you never know when inspiration or ideas just might strike and you need to jot something down. One of the questions I get about sketchy people is the process of sketchy people, how I draw them. Do I draw them on sight? The answer to that is no, I, I don't draw on sight just because for me to get into the zone of sketchy people, I, I need to kind of get into my art studio if I can. And each sketch takes about, you know, anywhere from a half an hour to an hour. So I like to have the calmness of a studio or maybe a quiet cafe to sketch them out. Sometimes I work from a photo, and this is a good opportunity for me to introduce myself and meet new people. And whether or not my reference is from a photo or from my memory, all sketchy people sketches start here in my little to-go sketchbook. These are my practice rounds for my sketches before I move on to the final 85 by 11 sketchy people in Inkle. So bring that sketchbook wherever you go and let the inspiration flow. One of the challenges of doing ink only is, if I make too big of a mistake, eh, I gotta start from the top once again. This might be the first Sketchy People sketch that I've done where I incorporated graphic elements in the drawing. I really wanted to capture the skater's speed going down Northeast 33rd. And if you know that hill in Portland, you know that it is quite the bomb. These graphic shapes that I used for the motion, I had no intention of incorporating on this sketch. They just kind of came out of me organically. And these are inspired by one of my favorite artists. And it's always fun when you see your inspirations come to life in your work. And these lines are inspired by Doug Johnson. Doug Johnson was born and raised in Toronto, Canada and moved to New York in the late 60s. Doug's background in editorial and fashion art were really taken to new heights in New York when he started designing album covers and movie and performance posters. This album cover right here is for Judas Priest's Screaming for Vengeance, and it's one of my favorite pieces of all time. His use of Art Deco with this very bright, candy-like coloring is just really mesmerizing to look at. His use of form, negative space, and energy just really make each one of his pieces something to behold. Doug has worked with a lot of magazines over the years, but it was a call to artists for Sports Illustrated that really got him going. These were actually the first pieces I ever saw of Doug's work. One of my elementary school teachers had these on the walls and I was transfixed. I was a Doug Johnson fan from the start. So thank you, Doug. Thank you for your inspiration, and I'm so glad your styling showed up magically in one of my pieces. And comment down below, who are some artists that inspire you?
This is one of my favorite comic shops in Portland, Rose City Comics on North Mississippi. We paid him a visit this past week, JoJo did too, and we were there to celebrate the Kickstarter party of Northwest Mocha. You can get your sketchy people at Rose City Comics, and you can learn more about Northwest Mocha and what they're doing for cartoonists in the area by clicking the link in the description. Ever wanted to see sketchy people in full color? Well, look no further than this rendition by my dear friend and very talented artist, Chris Knox. I saw this gentleman in Paris last month wearing a full-on purple suit, and Chris did a great job bringing this to life. Link in the description below for more of Chris's artwork. Thank you so much, my friend, for doing this. This looks amazing. 